Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a good week so far, has had a good weekend. Hi, Jainil. Hi, Milind. Hi, Romaine. Nice to see our members. Hi, Lydia. Hi, Asmul. Welcome, everyone. Good to see many students in the class. Uh, today, we are looking at the speaking section, the speaking interview of the IELTS exam. Specifically, we will focus on part one, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how to think broadly uh, during the speaking interview. That means how to think of many different ideas, but then, of course, you have to be specific and original with your answers. So I will tell you how to do that, so how to go from broad thinking to specific answers. All right, everyone, this lesson, as usual, is presented to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS success, please visit us there. Join our premium package. For general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. On both of those uh, websites, we have lots and lots of materials for you to learn improve your communication and your speaking and your writing skills. This is our academic website here with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join the premium package there. And for the general IELTS, it's the same layout but with a green background. And you can click that big red button to join the premium package. We are British Council IELTS Registration Center for Saudi Arabia. So any student in Saudi Arabia can also register for their exam through us. You just need to send us an email. And there is speaking practice with other students and with professionals on those websites as well. If you have questions, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com and I will gladly get to your questions as soon as I can. Now, our schedule for this week's live classes, the schedule is according to Central European Standard Time, CET or CEST, uh, and uh, they go from today, Wednesday, until Saturday. So today it's speaking part one. Tomorrow we will have two classes, starting with the reading class for members, and then we will do some listening uh, for everyone starting with parts one and part two, and then more classes. You can always see uh, the week's schedule and classes on our YouTube community post. So you can check it out there on the channel. All right, everyone. So this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak. I'm sure all of you are listening to my voice. At the same time, you want to repeat what I say. So speak and repeat. And it's great when you join the chat and you write your answers. Uh, make sure to also say your answers as well. So especially when I give you feedback, okay? Harkreet uh, saying my voice is low. Harkreet, if the voice is low, then uh, make sure uh, to turn up the volume. I, it's probably only on your end. Max Zalilov says, I love your fake smile, teacher. Um, Max, it's not a fake smile. I'm a really happy guy. I've got a good life. I do what I love, and I smile a lot. <laughs> so, but uh, thanks for noticing. All right, so everyone, let's start with some of these uh, questions that everybody gets when they an uh, enter their speaking interview. So when you walk into your speaking interview, uh, you will be met by your examiner. It will be a private one-on-one -on -one interview. And uh, of course, they're going to ask for some confirmation that you are you. So uh, the first question always that they will ask you is what is your full name? Okay, either that or may I see your identification, but one of those two. Um, so Mohammed Azat says, my given name is Mohammed and my surname is Omran. Please call me Mo for short. Yeah, Mo is a very common shortening of Mohammed. So that's really good, Mohammed. Yeah, please call me Mo for short. Uh, I've actually have uh, friends who are Mohammed and they say, just call me Mo. We call him Mo. So Mo is short for Mohammed. Yeah, that's great. Jainil says, my given name is Gabriel and my surname is Iglesias. Please call me 
by my nickname, Fluffy. <laughs> All right, Shiny, I'll something a little different today. Uh, it works. Okay, nickname. That would definitely be a nickname. All right. Um, Raghav is asking, how was my holiday? Yeah, I went on uh, two days of uh, t on a canoe trip, and the canoeing was great. I'm Canadian, so I love to canoe. Um, all right. Uh, Preeti Sina says, my first name is Preeti, and my family name is Sina. Uh, just call me Preeti. Yeah, uh, it's nice, Preeti, to add, please just call me Preeti, but it's okay if you don't. Uh, careful with the intonation. Just call me Preeti. Okay, so there's like a little bit of a pause in the natural intonation there. Uh, Milind uh, says, my full name is Milind Kapoor. Please call me by my first name, Milind. Yeah, or you could say Milind, which is Milind, right? Show your um, uh, adjective clause right away. Okay, so which is, why not? Show the which, all right? Uh, Ferdovs says, my last name, uh, I said my full name is Nabia Ferdovs, and he stopped me with anger. Hmm, that's kind of weird for Dobbs. I'm not sure why he did that. He shouldn't do that. Uh, you have the right to express yourself the way that you like, and all of these ways for Dobbs are totally fine, okay? Um, M. Verma Coding says, my first name is Manish, and my surname is Verma. You can call me by my given name, Manish. It's polite, and it's straight, okay? Irotvik says, my uh, name is Ratvik Patel. Please just call me Patel. That's good, too. Okay, so lots of ways to do this, practice many different ways. Uh, the examiner shouldn't be angry or shouldn't interrupt you when you're introducing yourself unless you're really uh, over speaking. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure for Dobbs. If I were you, I'd put in a complaint if you were interrupted while saying your full name. So it's absolutely okay to say my family name is uh, Matheson and my given names are uh, David Thomas. Please call me Tom. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely fine in natural English, and especially when we introduce ourselves to somebody who has no idea who we are, and they're going to check our ID. Um, yeah, it's good to be expressive. So, uh, what is your full name? Uh, my family name is Matheson, and my given names are David Thomas. Please just call me Tom, okay? Um, yeah, so that's fine, okay? And then, of course, the next question that they will usually ask you is, may I see your identification? Okay. Now, um, give me a nice uh, full sentence answer for this one. Valerian Seal says, I just want to say thank you very much for your videos. They helped me score a nine in my speaking exam recently. Valerian, band nine, perfect score. Fantastic. Good for you. Uh, congratulations. Okay. And I'm happy that I was able to help in that. Okay. Uh, Mohammed Izat says, yes, certainly. Here's my passport that I used to register for the exam. Please have a look. Nafisa says, yes, sure. Here you are. Yeah, I would always, Nafisa, add a little bit of politeness to the end of that, like, please take a look or please have a look, okay? Um, Manpreet Singh says, sure, here's my passport that I used to register um, for this exam. Top accessories, much love back at you from Budapest. Just stop spamming. Don't spam, guys and gals. Be nice to everyone in the chat, okay? All right. So Abu says, here you go. I use this to register for the IELTS. Uh, that's good. Also, uh, I would say what it is. So here, uh, here's, and you know, you want to use these contractions. They're natural. Here's instead of here is. So here's my passport. I used it to register uh, for this exam. Please take a look. Yeah. And again, it's good to give these clear, complete answers. Okay, don't get too chatty, but express yourself, uh, show fluency, and make sure you're not making any mistakes. Okay, all right. Now, next question. Uh, so here, the examiner might say something like, um, okay, uh, now we will begin with part one. I will record this for marking purposes. I will give you instructions for each part. 
Uh, first, a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Um, what do you like to do when the weather's nice? Okay. So, uh, Begjan says, when the weather is... Um, Preferable, usually around 6 p.m. I enjoy taking a stroll near the park with my friends and family to get fresh air and have a conversation. Yesterday, I spent around 50 minutes uh, when the weather was perfect, no wind and no cloud in the sky. Uh, very nice, Beck John. It's good to give a complete answer with answer, explanation, example, like Beck John just did. Uh, make sure that you're fluent when you're doing that, okay? So giving... Uh, answers that are, let's say, 200 to 300 characters, like one of your chat responses. Chat responses are 200 characters. It's okay, but make sure you're fluent. If you're really getting stuck, that's going to be awkward, okay? So answer, explain, example. All right, Lydia uh, Gerges. When the weather is sunny, I usually like to go for an adventure with my lovely mom and older sister, such as kayaking in Abu Dhabi specifically the eastern mangroves for two to three hours daily. Uh, nice. Okay, I would stop there, Lydia. That's a good answer. I think uh, the rest of it is maybe a bit too much. Okay, in the second comment. Flower Sun says, sometimes I like to go shopping to buy some dairy products with my friends when the weather is nice. Um, however, doing some homework activity is what I usually do during the day. Okay, Flower Sun, it's specific to uh, nice weather. Uh, Beckjohn used a good expression. Beckjohn says the weather is preferable. Um, the other way we express nice weather is fair weather. So um, on days when the weather is fair, I like to spend time outside uh, playing sports or going to an open air market. Uh, last Saturday was a really nice, warm, uh, sunny day, and I went uh, shopping at my local farmer's market for some fresh produce. All right, so sure, why not? Let's be active, right? Um, okay, so repeat after me. Again, students, this is a speaking class. It's speaking practice at the same time as some strategy. So let's do this. Uh, make sure that you're practicing questions as well as answers when you're preparing for your IELTS speaking section, okay? Questions are also important. Oftentimes, students spend too much time practicing answers and not enough time practicing questions. When you practice questions, it will also help you to understand questions that you are being asked, okay? Because the grammar structure of questions can be different than the answers. So uh, practice. So when you're doing it with partners, switch regularly. Uh, one person asks, the other person answers, okay? When you're practicing by yourself, Read the question, read the answer, record it on your phone. What do you like to do when the weather is nice? On days when the weather is fair, I like to spend time outside playing sports or going to an open air market. Last Saturday was a really nice warm sunny day and I went shopping at my local farmer's market for some fresh produce. Okay, that is definitely your path to a band nine. It's expressive. It answers the question, it explains your answer, and you give a specific uh, response or a specific example here. Uh, notice how there's no for example, okay? So here, when I give my example, I don't say for example, okay? Uh, just keep this in mind that Oftentimes, it's usually not a good idea to do that in the exam, so it's not a good idea to say, for example, or for instance, or other such, uh, because the examiner will think that you will ramble on, OK? 
Okay. Instead, when you give a clear example, it is intrinsic to your answer or to the fact that you are giving an example. Okay, so I'm sure that all of you understood that this part of my response was an example without actually having to say, for example, this will keep you more fluent and more natural, okay? In natural speech, we will often give an example without saying, for example, it's just related to the answer, so it's clear, okay? All right, so uh, let's go to the next one, okay? Uh, here we go. So now the examiner might say something like, or ask something like, how about when the weather is bad? So how about when the weather is bad? So the game says, well, when the sky starts to bucket down or the temperature is over 40, I usually tend to uh, stay home either to watch Netflix or play the piano. Yesterday the weather got over 40 and I turned on the AC and uh, practiced some Beethoven. Right, man? Why not? Um, yeah, nice, a smooth rolling example there. And that's nice, clear, good conversation. Okay. Aman Jot says, well, when the outside temperature is too high, I just like to sit in my home and spend my time studying and watching TV. Uh, in the evening time, I like to prepare lemon juice uh, to curb the heat wave. Okay, I'm on Jot. I made a few corrections there and added some more um, natural and in-depth vocabulary. So pay attention to that. Samuel says, when the weather is inclement, I enjoy sitting on the couch, wearing warm clothes, watching an English sitcom for fun and relaxation. Last Sunday... There was heavy rain, and I indulged myself uh, in some uh, in a few episodes of Friends. Yeah, Samuel, I see that you ran out of characters there, but you're on the right track, okay? Yuya says, well, if the weather is gloomy, that's a really nice word in this context, Yuya, gloomy. Uh, if the weather is gloomy, I feel depressed, so I stay at home and binge watch Friends to see whether uh, they are on a break or not. Okay, Yuya. It's great. All right. So let's see a couple more answers. Abhay says, well, when the weather is not that good, I usually like to spend time with my pet and playing video games at home. Like yesterday, there was some heavy rain at 6 p.m. I was just enjoying some of my new video games, Call of Duty, or whatever else have you. Yeah, so, <clears throat> okay. Let's uh, come up with a good answer here. Um, well, when the weather is gloomy, if it's raining cats and dogs, Or if it's too hot or too cold for me to feel comfortable, I stay indoors and either play some games or uh, study. Yesterday, the temperature was hovering around 40 plus. So I turned on the AC and played some video games. All right, there we go. So again, repeat after me, question and answer. So how about when the weather is bad? Well, when the weather is gloomy, if it's raining cats and dogs or if it's too hot or too cold for me to feel comfortable outdoors, I stay indoors and either play some games or study. Yesterday, the temperature was hovering around 40 plus, so I turned on the AC and played some video games, okay? 
So that's natural fluency, intonation, expression. My diction is definitely West Coast, North American, something that you hear in California, Washington, and of course my home of British Columbia. Uh, it's a very clear, crisp type of English, so by all means I encourage you to copy it, okay? Uh, so this is a high band answer because it contains a lot of complex language. It contains a slight bit of idiomatic language, raining cats and dogs. It's co uh, containing good paraphrase instead of bad weather. It's gloomy weather. I explain it further by saying too hot, too cold to be comfortable. I'm using a correlative conjunction. Those are the paired conjunctions. We just released a new video uh, that talks about connectors or connectives and linking words that you should use in your IELTS. Uh, speaking and writing. So if you haven't seen that new video yet on the channel, I definitely suggest checking it out. It's an HD video, so uh, it's a little bit easier watching than these uh, low latency live streams. Um, but uh, again, in that video, you can get a lot of understanding of different types of conjunctions like if and either or um, leading expressions as well. So just to make everything connected, okay? Um, Iritvik is asking, will make, making my answers really short degrade my performance? Yeah, it will. So if you're answering very short and brief, like in a very basic chit chat where you almost seem like you're disinterested in the conversation, um, then that can definitely hurt your mark, even if you have good English because it's not going to be considered fluent enough, Iritvik. Also, it will not be considered complex enough. Um, and it's unlikely that you're going to show your full range of vocabulary as well, okay? So you definitely want your answers to be roughly like this. And I think many students probably realize that in a 12 to 15 minute speaking interview, when you answer about this length for each of the questions, then it ends up being roughly 12 to 15 minutes. So if you're answering short, you get a lot of questions or you get a very short interview, okay? So ideally it's going to be 12 to 15 minutes, okay? Mahbuba is asking, which do you mostly use in your day-to-day -day communication with people, your native language or English? Mahbuba, I use English. That is my native, <laughs> that is my, uh, native uh, language. Um, so I use English most of the time. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so let's keep going here. At this point, uh, the examiner will say, okay, so uh, let's talk about health. Okay, they'll introduce the topic of part one, some kind of a general topic, like let's talk about health. Okay, now again, remember the title of this lesson? The title of the lesson is Think Broad, Answer Specific. Okay, uh, students and candidates often will have difficulty on both ends. So many students get stuck for ideas when they're being asked for questions uh, or when they're asked the questions, they often will repeat the same idea over and over again. And then uh, there are many students who don't answer specifically enough, okay? So you have to find the balance to think broad and answer specific. So let's talk about that a bit and answer some of these questions, okay? So immediately um, when you hear the introduction of uh, the topic of part one. And of course, this is true for uh, part two and three as well, okay? So you hear the topic of health, okay? That should set off some triggers, some light bulbs in your head, okay? Um, there's a game called word association where I say health, you say something. I say health, you say something, okay? So if I say health, what word comes to mind? Okay, give me some words here, students. So when you hear the word health come up in conversation, somebody says, let's talk about health. Uh, what are immediately the words that will come to mind?
Okay. Uh, Romaine says exercise, uh, food, cardio. Okay. So exercise, food, cardio. Okay. All right. Um, let's see what else. Physical activity. Okay. Sports. Okay, so uh, a lot of you right now, and you're thinking medicine, diet, vitamins, and this is what tends to happen, right? So vitamins, diet, okay, it's good, all right? So what many of, what many of you are doing, what most of you are doing, is you're thinking about the how, Okay, so you're thinking about how do we achieve health, right? This is what you're thinking of right away. Okay, so many of you are actually answering the question of how do I achieve health? Well, through exercise, through food, through cardio, through physical activity, sports, medicine, vitamin, diet. Okay, I can see that. Um, what I'm not seeing much of is what and why, okay? And that tends to be a common mistake or a common, I don't want to say mistake, but a common trend in our thinking, okay, is we tend to jump these very important questions of what and why. So if I think of what is health, okay, um, what would you say uh, is uh, health? Or So Erkin says it's a state of the body, right? So state of body and yeah there we go so Romaine's thinking of an example of it and mind right so when we hear the word health many of us immediately will think of the most visible component of health which is a healthy body but of course there's another component of health which is a healthy mind so having healthy thinking having a positive attitude um, being optimistic Okay, so health, when we get into it, is healthy body and healthy mind, all right? Uh, and then um, why? Okay, so why are we concerned about health? So this is another question that not many people kind of thought about here, but why are we concerned about health? So why do we, why do we, why, why does it matter? So um, why care about health? Okay, so Samuel says to live a long life. Okay, for longevity, sure. So longer lifespan, yeah. Um, Puiti says health is wealth. Okay, so Puiti, what you're saying is for success, okay, uh, financially and with uh, relationships. Sure, I agree with that. Okay. Uh, Manpreet says to prevent disease and suffering. Yeah. Okay, great. So, students, ideally, when you're in the speaking section and you are being introduced the part one, part two, and part three topic, then you go through what, why, and how in that a uh, very short couple of seconds uh, and not just focus on the how, but also give focus to the what and the why. So don't miss any of these three components in your thinking. When you practice that before your speaking interview, you can really train your mind to think what, why, how, what, why, how, and answer these questions very quickly, right away visualizing, and then of course thinking broadly. So thinking in a much broader perspective of the topic of the speaking. And when you do that, you will give a lot better answers. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's what you want to practice. And the order here does matter. So it's good to think about what first, then uh, why second, and then how third. Okay. So it's important to do this. And as the questions come, that's what you want to do. Does that make sense? Can a couple of you just give me a thumbs up? I want to make sure I'm not losing everyone here 
with my uh, presentation. So think about, oh, what is health? Yeah, okay, wait a second, physical, but is it anything else? Yeah, okay, it's also the mind. Uh, why, why do I care about health? Well, I want to live long. I want to have kids. I want to be successful. Right. Okay. Um, so how do I do that? Well, I can exercise. Uh, I can eat the right food. Wait a second. For my mind, I can also meditate. Um, I can also get help from psychologists or counselors if I have issues. Okay. So I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up now. Some people doing this. That's perfect. Okay. So for this kind of a topic, what I often see happening is somebody starts talking about exercise and they just get stuck on exercise. And for all of part one, they're just talking about exercise and doing exercise and going running. Okay. And they're stuck in this exercise and running, exercise and running, and they completely miss all of the other components of health. Okay. All right. Good. So a lot of acknowledgement. Fantastic. Okay. So let's go to the first question. And now thinking about this what, why, how, let's give some nice, clear answers, explanations, and examples. Okay. All right. Um, so here we go. So the examiner says, how often do you exercise? Okay. So let's talk about health. You have a, one or two seconds to just really quickly think about that. And then the question comes, how often do you exercise? Okay. All right. So Abhishek says, well, I go for exercise four times in a week to the gym for cardio weightlifting. Not only does it help me recharge my batteries, but it also benefits, um, my, uh, mood. Okay. My mood. So the way that I feel emotionally. Uh, internal organs, Abhishek, that's kind of weird to say that. Okay. Um, Abhishek says veins circulate the body easily. It's too much. So don't get into any kind of weird dialogue, Abhishek. Okay. So especially for part one, save that more for part three. Okay. Uh, Abhi says I'm quite serious person about health and exercise. So usually I wake up daily at 4 a.m., do some cardio and yoga for about two to three hours a day. Sometimes I also prefer going for a run. Why, Abhe? Why are you so serious about exercise? Okay. Simran says, I usually do exercise a couple of times per day because I'm fond of it. Um, it's a way for me to be active and energetic throughout the whole day. Good, Simran. Uh, throw in an example. I started this morning with a 30-minute stretch yoga session, and I'm feeling loose and pumped up for this speaking. All right. Uh, Saswati says, I'm a fitness freak. I go running every day, at least an hour in the morning. Like yesterday, I went to the local park, uh, jogging. It helps me to feel great both physically and mentally. Right? So, oh, I'm a fitness freak. I exercise daily, whether it's going to the gym or an 8K run. I'm constantly active. Uh, just this morning, I ran around uh, Margate park. This helps me to stay fit both physically and mentally. All right. So borrowing a little bit from what you have said, but also adding a little bit of my own. Uh, so again, encouraging those connectives, those linking words. Okay. How often do you exercise? Oh, I'm a fitness freak. That is an expression we use for someone who exercises quite often. I exercise daily, whether it's going to the gym or an 8K run. I'm constantly active. Just this morning, I ran around Margate Park. Uh, this helps me to stay fit both physically and mentally. Okay, why not immediately show the examiner that, hey, I'm not just speaking English, but I'm also thinking and I'm thinking broad. So I understand 
that being healthy is more than just being physically fit, okay? Okay, next question. What do you eat to be healthy? Okay, so what do you eat to be healthy? All right, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Okay. All right. So Khalil says, I'm a choosy person when it comes to eating because I know one thing that whenever uh, whatever is being eaten, it's not only going to impact my health, but it also has a positive or negative impact on my immune system. Uh, Khalil, you haven't answered my question. The question is, what do you eat to be healthy? Okay. Um, a carrot, an apple, ramen, goulash, spaghetti. What do you eat? Okay. All right. Bekchan says, in order to be in good health, I always try to eat some homemade food since it contains all of the nutrients and vitamins that my body needs. As well, I eat a lot of vegetables and fruits such as apples and bananas, at least one of them a day. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. That's the saying, right? An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Um, okay, uh, good. Uh, Bekchan, you don't need good health condition, just good health or good condition. Uh, good health condition, we usually don't say that in natural English, okay? All right. Sayed says, I eat home-cooked food to be fit, which in turn allows me to be healthy as it contains all of the natural ingredients um, like rice, cereals, meats, vegetables, and fruits. Okay. Um, think about it like this. So, uh, think about a, an answer in this sense, students. So, Okay, so some of you did this. It was a good start, although a lot of the answers had some missing elements, okay? So think about your answer in this case. What do I eat? Okay, so what do I eat? I eat home-cooked meals, pasta, steak, lots of vegetables, and fruits. Why do I eat it? Not a lot of salt or sugar. No preservatives. Lots of vitamins. Protein and energy. Okay, so instead of giving you the fully connected response in this case, I'm basically uh, segregating or separating the elements of my what, why, how. So I'm going to show you how my brain kind of thinks of the answer and then puts it together into a more fluent response, okay? And you can practice this at home when you're answering speaking questions is break your answer into its elements and then string it all together, okay? So, okay, all right, how, how do I, can you give me an example of this as kind of the how concept? So, how? I started the day with a fruit salad and had a medium steak for dinner, okay? Or um, I can say chicken sandwich for lunch because maybe my IELTS exam is in the afternoon and had a chicken sandwich for lunch, okay? All right, and I feel fit, okay? So that's my answer in its elements. Now all I need to do is I take this and uh, I put it together with some leading expressions and some connectives, OK? 
Okay, so all I do here is I say something like, um, in order uh, to stay fit, okay? Uh, in order to stay fit, I'm basically taking the question and paraphrasing it. It's a really good idea to use the question, paraphrase it in your answer, and reflect just so that the examiner can see right away that you're on topic and you've understood the question. In order to stay fit, I eat home-cooked meals like pasta, steak, and of course, a lot of vegetables. Okay, um, because when I eat at home, I know that the food is low in sugar and salt and rich in nutrients and proteins. Just this morning, I started the day with a fruit salad and then I had a chicken sandwich for lunch and I feel a hundred and ten percent for this exam. Okay, hundred and ten percent is kind of an idiomatic expression that means better than perfect. Okay, so all I did here was I just took the what, why, how elements that my mind created and kind of put them together. Now, you can get really fast and very good at this uh, when you practice it, okay? So uh, again, repeat after me. What do you eat to be healthy? In order to stay fit, I eat home-cooked meals like pasta, steak, and of course a lot of vegetables because when I eat at home, I know that the food is low in sugar and salt and rich in nutrients and proteins. Just this morning, I started the day with a fruit salad, and then I had a chicken sandwich for lunch, and I feel 110% for this exam. Nice, natural, fluent language, okay? That's what we're looking for, and that's how you string it together. Okay, let's go to the next question. These are always different. They're always unique. Here's the next one, okay? Uh, where is a place you visit for your health? Again, you shouldn't just think gym or recreation center, but you should think chiropractor, physiotherapist, hospital, um, counselor, psychologist. There are a lot of places, right? Not just for physical health, but mental health. You might go to a mosque, a church, a Buddhist temple uh, where you get into a spiritual state of well-being. Um, so think broad, okay? Think broad. Don't limit yourself, all right? Pranav says, a place that I love to visit to keep healthy is my tennis club. Um, playing lawn tennis keeps me invigorated and ready to slug it out uh, in the name of fun and pleasure. Uh, besides, it's just a five-minute walk from my home, so it's convenient. Mm, very good. Okay. Hat Patel is asking, uh, can we use the word we and you in speaking? We're actually just making a video uh, that answers that question, Hut. Uh, no, you shouldn't use you especially, so don't use you, okay? Don't speak directly about your examiner. Speak about yourself in part one, okay? Speak about people in general in part three, so you should not use the word you, okay? Lydia says to uh, check my, uh, to go for a checkup, I usually go to the medical center twice a month where some nurses and uh, physicians um, provide some services to examine my condition, okay? Uh, last month, I visited the Heart uh, Healthcare Service uh, in order uh, to get a checkup and um, other than a little bit of vitamin uh, deficiency, I was in excellent shape. Okay, Lydia, there's a couple of oddities there, so just be careful with that, okay? All right, looking good. 
Amanjot says, well, hospitals are a place where I go monthly for checkups and also consult a dietitian, Mr. Singh. He adds new varieties of foods to my diet according to the status of my uh, body. Uh, moreover, a playground is where I go to uh, get some physical fitness. Um, very good. So uh, the answer, I both visit the local sports club, a five-minute walk from my home to exercise and stay fit as I mentioned earlier and I go to my family physician and dentist for physical and dental checkups just to make sure that everything is a-okay all right uh, so here we go uh, repeat after me where is a place you visit for your health I both visit the local sports club, a five-minute walk from my home to exercise and stay fit, as I mentioned earlier, and I go to my family physician and dentist for physical and dental checkups just to make sure that everything is A-OK. -okay. There's a nice little idiomatic expression uh, for you. A-OK -okay means like 100% all right, okay? Now, you don't have to overkill, so you don't have to go into a lengthy explanation or example for every question and I didn't do it in this case but you should be thinking that way for at least 50% of your answers okay so at least 50% of your answers you should think that way all right okay Pachu Yadav says I always go to visit the doctor at the public hospital or clinic for my health checkups because there are facilities uh, for a full diagnosis and it's not expensive like the last time I went to my family doctor. Yeah, so uh, Wajha Nur says, can I talk about religion or Holy Quran? Yeah, Wajha, you can as long as uh, you stay on topic. Um, you can say that you visit your mosque um, because uh, expressing your difficulties in life to some religious leaders there helps you uh, to be spiritually healthy, which also helps you to be physically healthy. So you can say that. You can say that you go to a religious location for spiritual and mental health that also helps you physically. Just make sure that you stay on topic, okay? It's absolutely okay, right? A uh, special one is asking, can we use words like, you know, or like this, uh, which are natural? Um, yeah, of course, you can use words like that that are natural. So fillers or parts of your diction, as it's called. Okay. You do want to sound semi-professional. It's not a job interview, but it's not a chit chat. So you do want to sound uh, semi-professional. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. Let's do one more. Okay, here we go. If you are stressed, what do you do? I hope everybody's got a good answer for this one. Stress is the number one killer. All right. Um, so, <laughs> Mohammed Azad says, watch Adrian's videos. Okay, well, if they help you relax, Mohammed, sure. I mean, there might be some more relaxing, uh, activities out there, but thank you for that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Saswati says to reduce stress, I do yoga for an hour at night before I go to bed. It not only helps me to uh, relieve stress, but also gives me mental strength for the next day. Very nice, Saswati. Um, Pablak, Parlak, I can't read this, the, the, I think it's Turkish, but I can read your comment. I remove all devices from my bedroom and make sure that the alarm clock has red numbers, not blue, since blue light interferes with sleep. Uh, I avoid checking my email, text, and social media uh, before bedtime. 
Okay, uh, make sure you use the question in your answer so the examiner's clear that you're not answering what do you do to get a good night's sleep, but what do you do to uh, get rid of stress, okay? Pranav says, when I feel stressed out, uh, it's usually because I overthink the problem I'm facing to conquer this. I usually try to engross myself in uh, non-related activities such as exercise and video games. Pranav, very nice. Nice use of vocabulary. Good job. Okay. Sajeev um, says, whenever I feel stressed out, Whenever I feel stressed out, I like to play my favorite video game for an hour or two. I also like to talk to my friends if something is affecting me personally. Yeah, okay. So that's a good way to relieve stress. Um, whenever, I feel stressed out, I like to communicate my problems with others. I feel that this not only helps me to be at ease with myself, but also oftentimes I get good advice to deal with whatever is making me strung out. I was upset at uh, losing my watch the other day and it really helped me to tell a few of my friends about my disappointment. Okay, good. So here we go. Uh, again, lots of connectives. Repeat after me. If you are stressed, what do you do? Whenever I feel stressed out, I like to communicate my problems with others. I feel that this not only helps me to be at ease with myself, but also oftentimes I get good advice to deal with whatever is making me strung out. I was upset at losing my watch the other day and it really helped me to tell a few of my friends about my disappointment. All right, talk to others. We're social creatures. Telling others about our problems usually helps alleviate stress. Alleviate is the word there. Um, here's a question you can try with some of your friends or in your class or even just by yourself. Have you ever worried about your health? Pay attention to the present perfect nature of that question. Students, uh, lots of advice for you today of how to think broadly when you are engaging the questions in the speaking section of the exam. For lots of strategies, I highly recommend visiting aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Again, this is general IELTS here with the green background, and academic IELTS is this one with the blue background. You can click that big red button to get access to all of our videos, practice exams, interactive course, mobile applications, and lots of other goodies. So that's it for today. Tomorrow, I will be back with a reading class for our members. Uh, of course, everybody can watch that class. And then an all chat class uh, for listening section uh, part one and part two. You're very welcome, Had Patel, Pichu, uh, Irutvik, um, Kwasak, Amanjot. Nice to see so many of you in the class today. Uh, keep up the good work. Practice is the key to success. Don't forget that. I'm Adrian. Much love to all of you. I'm signing out for now from Budapest. Bye.